Hi, I'm MJ Hecox at Leopold's Cafe, where we pair our bottles with books. So for today's pairing, we've chosen two different wines, as the dishes also offer a different flavor profile. With the pan-seared scallops, we're recommending Charleston Social Madeira. Madeira is a fortified wine made off of Portugal, and it offers notes of caramel, vanilla, spice, and it should pair beautifully with the brown sugar and the apple notes in this dish. Wine Enthusiast gives this bottle 93 points, and it's a favorite of Chef Mario Batali. With the French poached scallops, of course, we're recommending a French wine. This is uh, Michel Red, Puy Fumé. It's from the Loire Valley, which is an area in France famed for Sauvignon Blanc. This wine offers notes of tart green apple blossom and a crisp acidic backbone that will cut through the cream sauce beautifully. Wine Enthusiast gives this bottle 91 points. Sauvignon Blanc is one of the most popular wines worldwide. Please join us next Monday, May 2nd, in the evening for a tasting of Sauvignon Blanc. It's a perfect pair with spring foods such as salads or seafood. More information at leopoldsmadison.com. Hey, you guys at home, welcome to Cooking with the Cap Times. Woo, we got an in-person audience behind me. I'm gonna pass it off to our food editor, Lindsay Christians, in a sec. And tonight we're so excited to welcome Tempest chef Susan Hendricks, who's behind me here. You guys just saw a message from our official wine pairing sponsor, Leopold's Books Bar Cafe. We hope you stop by Leopold's on Regent Street if you haven't yet. Browse some books, get some wine, have a latte. It's an amazing space. Um, if you have the recipe at home, you know that they paired uh, two different wines tonight with each of the uh, dishes that are being made. So um, stop by Leopold's and get a bottle. We're also going to be giving away a bottle of wine to our at-home viewers. So tonight, make sure you ask questions. But at the end of the evening, we're going to be picking the best question, and they'll be taking home a bottle of wine that you can pick up right at Leopold's. I also want to thank our other sponsors who help continue this series and help make Cooking with the Cap Times possible. We have our presenting sponsor, Provision Market at Pasquale's Cantina. Make sure you stop by their East Wash location, grab some goods for the Bucks game as they're on their way to become the world champs again. Um, it's a great space. You can get everything you need in there from dips to craft beer to liquor um, to those delicious Pasquale's chips that we love. Um, and I also want to thank our uh, official kitchen sponsor, where we are this evening, our host of Cooking with the Cap Times, is Kessenix. You can shop like a chef here at Kessenix because they're always open to the public. And make sure you visit their website, get to know them a little better, check out their hours, and stop by. I want to have one last plug and thank you for our Cap Times members. We couldn't do the journalism and the work we do in our newsroom without you. If you'd like to give any amount to support our newsroom, and if you'd like to give any amount to support Cooking with the Cap Times, head to membership.captimes.com. We are approaching May, crazy already, and May is our spring membership drive month. We are hoping to raise $25,000 in May to support journalism and our newsroom. So we appreciate all of your support at home. I think that's all I've got, Lindsay and Chef. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll Thank pass you. it off to you. All right. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Yay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Susan. Hello, Lindsay. How are you? I'm good. Happy Thank birthday. You for, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. <laughs> of On course. my birthday. Um, I wanted, first of all, for you to introduce yourself just a little bit to folks who may have not met you before or seen you on TV before. Nobody's seen me on TV before. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, my name is Susan that? Hendricks and I am currently the sous chef at the Tempest Oyster Bar and I also worked at the Tornado Club Steakhouse. Um, hence we have two uh, scallop dishes from the sister restaurants. And I also used to be the owner of the Sunprint Cafe on the Square. Uh, for about nine years um, in between the tornado and the tempest. Um, before that, I worked at the Opus, I worked at the Orpheum, uh, but one of my favorites was um, the Crescent City Grill, where I learned a whole bunch of different uh, French techniques and lots of tasty little things from uh, Chef Nate Herndon, who uh, now has 
107 state. Yes, yeah, he does. Yeah, he's done a lot of really cool stuff, so. So, just a question for you. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of thing did you eat growing up? What kind of food did you eat growing up? <laughs> I didn't prepare you for that no. one. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ate a lot of vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't a big fan of meats when I was a kid. Mm. Um, actually, for most of my life until I was probably about 24, I was a vegetarian. Ah. And it wasn't because I had all of these feelings about meat or anything like that. Just didn't like it. And um, Henry told me one day, this is when I worked at the Orpheum, Henry Doan told me one day, you, you haven't had one of my steaks. No, no. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you a steak. And you're going to like it. And he did, and I really liked it. <laughs> and uh, so that's uh, it's kind of how I got into more seafood and, and steak items, uh, meat items. Um, still not a big fan of chicken, though. <laughs> yeah. so why did you end up choosing scallops for us tonight? Um, I think that scallops are a little, they're on the, on the side of ex too expensive to mm, try at home mm -hmm. without knowing how to make them. A little bit of the, if I screw this up, will I be throwing away a $30 meal? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just the protein part is $30. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice, there, there's something that I think is delicious, they're succulent, they're they, they've got a texture that nothing else has, mm -hmm. especially when they're cooked correctly. They also have a texture that nothing else has when they're overcooked. Yes, they do. <laughs> they really do. And I think that people should, you know, it would be nice to be able to have people be a little bit more comfortable with making them. Yes. That would be wonderful. That's part of why I, I'm really glad you chose this in part because I remember the first time I made scallops, I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. Like, I'm gonna mess it up, I know it. And it, they were fine, they were beautiful. I had a good recipe with good instructions mm -hmm. and I was very grateful. But man, to take that leap of like, all right, just spent a lot of money on this. Yeah. I really don't wanna screw it up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and I mean, sure, most people can, you know, they can buy a nice expensive steak and cook it the way that they'd like to, mm -hmm. but Buying something, you know, where, where this costs four dollars, mm -hmm. is that's 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 a little off off the wall sometimes to people, and if you mess it up, dinner's not going to be very good. Yeah. <laughs> so. So these scallops that you have are these U10? Uh, yes, they are U10s. Uh, they're kind of on the smaller end. I bought myself a bucket of them from our seafood company. And typically, a U10 will be big enough that I can't touch my fingers together. These are a little bit smaller um, than what we usually get. It all depends on who cuts open the scallop, right. who puts it in the bucket. It all fits within the weight range. It's just not exactly what, usually they're bigger. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like did some Googling and tried to figure out like, there were like, um, you know, with a, with a ruler and then the size of the different scallops. Because I have made the mistake before when I was younger, I was trying to make a scallop dish and I was like, oh, bay scallops, they're so much no. cheaper. No, I didn't, you didn't. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, look at that, this will totally work. They yeah. are very different. They are very different. They're very different. Yeah. And they're, they're little. They're tiny and they cook fast. They cook real fast. And they turn into pencil erasers Boing. really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Giada De Laurentiis, you didn't tell me that this would not, like, wouldn't work. I don't know. I didn't know the, the real difference. I know now. Yes, actually, this is just, if any of you have seen like a clam or a mussel, there's that, mu there's a tiny little mussel on the inside that pulls the, pulls the shells together. Mm -hmm. This is what pulls the shell together in a scallop. This is the only part of it that we eat. And then usually the shell for this is pretty big around it. So this is just the muscle that goes up and down. Everything else, the eye, there's multiple parts of the scallop that aren't used then. Yeah, yeah, so. because they do other things. Yeah. That yeah. we're not as interested in eating. Well, they, aren't, <laughs> they don't quite have that succulent, dreamy texture that scallops have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So are you going to start with the um, Tempest dish? Yes, I am. All right. But I'm going to just get my potatoes going first. OK. To make sure that we have the uh, coquilles ready to go. And I, want, I have some of them in that pot already. But I wanted to just uh, demonstrate real quick the size of the, uh, 
of the potato pieces that you want to use. I'm going to move this just a oh, little bit thank here. You. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of stuff. That's It'll okay. all go away over time. I just, I'm, I'm not a very tall, <laughs> we are not very tall people. No, neither no. one of us. Does it matter if they're russet potatoes versus a Yukon Gold or something else? Uh, Tornado uses russets, um, but you can use Yukon Golds. Um, the Tempest uses Yukon Golds exclusively for our mashed potatoes, um, but I wanted to be a little bit more um, honest to the recipe here. Got it, okay. Also, why peeler? Not I love a, these things. Not a handheld. I'm other so glad. Know. So glad you guys have one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a viewing question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In, um, and maybe you already addressed this, but what were the types of scallops you used here uh, tonight? These are sea scallops. Sea scallops. You ten sea scallops. Uh, you can use smaller size scallops if you'd like. Obviously, the cooking time will decrease as, along with the size. So you ten just means that there's uh, less than ten scallops per pound. Okay. And then if there's uh, there's other variations in size. Uh, I believe the next size is 10 20s or it's U12. 10 to 15. It's U12 and then 10 to 15. So I called Jim Burke at Burke and Benham, the seafood mm -hmm. company over on Monroe Street. I have not been there yet. Yeah, I have. I've interviewed him now three times and I haven't been there myself you yet. You really but should go. I need to. Um, really nice guy and very helpful. And he, I said, you know, listen, I've got this class coming up. Like, if people want to get scallops, you know, and do you carry U10s? And he said, basically no, uh, that he, what he usually can get from his suppliers is between like a 10 and 15, like a 12 range right there. Um, but he said that like if you tell him the recipe you're making basically, he'll just tell you to cut the cooking time by about 30 seconds per side um, and that will, everything else you can pretty much do the same. We also had a viewer at home ask Ooh, about your shirt from chef. chef. Oh, and I know we want to talk about it, but someone's asking. Yeah, yeah. So. In January, uh, my 22-year-old niece, Kelsey, right here, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. She had gone to the hospital, was all bloated, had a lot of abdominal pains, and uh, they did surgery. They pulled out a giant mass and determined it was cancer. And this shirt is just a little solidarity with her along with my lack of hair yes <laughs> <laughs> but we also wanted to kind of bring up the uh wisconsin ovarian cancer alliance they uh they helped her out gave her a little bit of a, a, a lot of information not a little bit and uh helped her out with feeling a little more comfortable with the situation that she was in and understanding that you know there's an end to it there will and she'll make it through and uh, we also wanted to ask if anybody at home might want to donate to the Wisconsin Cancer Alliance. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the Wisconsin Ovarian Cancer Alliance. Uh, it's just wisconsinovariancancer.org, and there's a big blue button that says donate. She was doing a, uh, a fundraiser on Facebook for her birthday, which is on the 5th, by the way. Ah. <laughs> and uh, I thought if I could get her just a couple hundred more dollars, yeah. <laughs> she'd make it to $1,000, and it would be really great. Um, but yeah, that's what my shirt's for, is it's for my niece. Yeah, well that's wonderful. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Thanks for uh, asking about it. I, and thank you so much to uh, the Cap Times for letting me wear it and do a little plug for, uh, for a donation. Yeah. You, you did ask, which was really kind. Yeah. <laughs> I've worn questionable things over here, I'll never ask. And you asked about that, and I think we were all just like, God, yes! <laughs> Well, I didn't want to, you know, this is for, this is a different business sort of thing, and I didn't want to be yeah. presumptive. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah. And of course, I asked her first. So. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. But yeah, she's, she's doing well. She's had uh, three rounds of chemo, hopefully had her last one on Thursday, but we won't find out until after they do some tests. So, fingers crossed, hopefully it'll be the it. last one. So I cut up some uh, the Dresser rest of the potatoes, size, yeah. yeah, just so that you can kind of see the size that I'm going for. You don't want them to end up being mushy and watery, so they've got to be kind of a little bit larger. But we're going to just, I'm going to grab ah. a bowl here. Because I stashed a whole ton of them over there thinking, I don't know when I'm going to need them. Throw these into some salted water that I already have hot back here, and we'll get these boiling, and then we'll do the Tempest ones. Is that salted water? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. 
Salty like the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you hear about pasta water. They say pasta water, salty like you, the ocean. Well, if you don't have the salt in there, I mean, the pasta tastes like nothing. Yes, true. My husband, <laughs> my husband still won't do it, though. Like, he'll, really? like, especially if it's like an RP's like stuffed thing. He's like, there's salt in there already. And I'm like, not well, really. yeah, but uh, no. not enough. No, <laughs> not enough. What I'm I love is like salting meat like a sidewalk. Have you heard that? Like you salt your meat like a sidewalk? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I can, like that. I can see that now. <laughs> so earlier I had cut up some bacon. Uh, this is this is Newski's bacon, that uh, nice thick cut ones. So you end up with nice big chunks. I don't know if you want to like move that up here a little bit, yeah. So that you can see it. Yeah. It's nice big chunks that you want to be able to actually pick up with your fork. That when starts you're a it. lot bigger, right? Like they really yes, shrink. Yes, this is actually probably, it's shrunk by about a third. So we're going to drain that because you don't want all that fat. That's why we that's why we did that. This is such a chef -y thing. This that's like a chinois, right? Yep. <laughs> I have like a real little one, but like you see these in real like professional kitchens all the time. We use them all the time. Yeah, massive chinois thing. So we'll let that drain for a couple minutes here. One more really quick scallops question. You can't right, have scallop yeah. night with all these questions. Yeah, no, scallops. go for it. Uh, were they wet packed or dry packed? Dry packed. Never by wet packed. Why? Wet packed means that it's packed in chemicals to try to keep it from, uh, from going <laughs> bad faster. You don't want that. God. You want only dry packed. Dry packed means that it was cut out of the scallops, out of the scallop shell, it was kind of cleaned off, and then it was shoved into a bucket. I, Nothing else yes. but the juice from the scallop. I feel like I've heard that you're supposed to buy dry pack but I did not remember why <laughs> only dry pack that's one of the little nuggets of information that I learned from Henry Dome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Henry. <laughs> so these are this is a, a dice like a mm -hmm. kind of a larger dice sort of yeah it is uh, these are the granny smith apples they'll be diced up once again all of this is going to shrink up in the sauce so it'll probably end up being just about half this size by the time it's done so you want to have it be pretty big so that it's not just, you're not just trying to get it up with your fork and maybe spoon it onto your knife. And you, it needs to be something that's actually capable of being eaten relatively elegantly. Are, are you, does it matter to have a Granny Smith apple because of the tartness? Would a pink lady yes. or something work? Uh, well, the Granny Smith apple holds its shape too. Ah. So that, hence it makes a really good baking apple. Yeah. But you want it to hold its shape and you don't want to add any extra sugar. We're already adding tons of sugar to it already. With the, With the brown, brown sugar, sugar and the brandy. And the brandy. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just dice these babies up here. And since we're doing 12 people, I'll use the whole apple. Um, All right. It reminds me of how you might cut an onion, actually. It is. It's very similar. Yeah. <laughs> you dice everything almost the same. I mean, seriously. Yeah. So we've got our apples. The scallops, you might have seen me doing uh, earlier, taking some feet off. These are, I, and I, I'll never understand why they leave these on. Nobody eats them. They're Be tough. And you always have to take them off, but you end up having to, have to pay for it. It's really annoying. Well, uh, is it just like a, <laughs> is it like, is it like a, a time thing like it would take too much time for whoever it is to do I it. I don't know. I mean expensive. it already takes forever to open up a scallop and everything. That's cut this thing out. That's valid. So I mean why not just take the one extra 10 seconds to take that off. But you know it's just another way that they make a little bit more money. I sent my, <laughs> I sent my husband to the store for a roasted salted pistachios because I was using them in a recipe and I uh -huh. was like you know the shell it's shelled, shelled and he either didn't hear me or he didn't care and he came back with like pistachios in the shell oh no and I was like congratulations honey put, put on a television show <laughs> uh, you did wonderful it took things. him hours hours <laughs> to shell a pound of pistachios and he, he was very fine about it but I was like yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing that yeah <laughs> um so we're gonna we're gonna start searing our scallops now or one more scallop question. Oh yeah, go I for swear it. I'm not making a mum. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so, I don't mind. Go for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> chef, do you prefer wild caught versus or farm raised scallops? Uh, I've only used wild caught scallops, so I can't cool. really tell you if I if I even have an opinion on farm raised. Okay. Um, I think that says something that you've only had wild caught. Yeah. Well, I don't know if scallops are like like if you. There's something that you typically go out troll for. Pull them up out of the dirt, and then you have to go through the 
whole process. I mean, sure. there's, there's a good reason why they're extremely expensive, mm -hmm. but it's also, I mean, I don't know why. I, I don't think that they can necessarily farm these. Sure. It takes a long time to get them to that size. Oh, yeah, maybe so, they can't. I yeah. don't know if I've had. A lot of a lot of the fish that we get, like especially like your, your festivals and your whatever, like it is farm fish. Um, but like oysters, for example, you like the, it, they give back to their ecosystems, right? Like yes. They, yeah. Yes. So you like farm raise is fine, like <laughs> oyster farms. Yeah, oyster farms. I mean, most most of the like, cultivated oysters that we use are uh, well obviously they're cultivated so they're yeah. they're farmed um but that's how you get the named oysters so like kumamoto's yeah. blue points naked cowboys mer blues malpacs whatever they're all grown in a specific spot they're all raised for a specific flavor profile they are all done in one particular way to make sure that every time yeah. you get it this this particular oyster tastes just like a kumamoto a and other oh, i know that hurts. <laughs> but you know Kumamoto's and Kushis are like two. Those are my favorites too. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> likes West Coast. I love West Coast. I love West Coast. <laughs> yeah. Just think, what did you say? What was the word? K Kumamoto or Kumamoto? Kumamoto. Yeah, Kumamoto oysters. Yeah. Yeah. I'm They're rookie over here, you guys. Yeah. I know nothing. They're, They're so unfortunately good. incredibly expensive. Yes. But um, but they're so good. They're so good. Cool. <laughs> they're the best. Okay, so we're gonna take a little kosher salt here. Someone did ask if the recipe would work without bacon. Oh. Uh, you can do it without the bacon. You lose the salty note to it. Um, and, I mean, you could add salt to it, I guess. And it does become very, very sweet. Okay. Yeah. And then, we'll would you cut the sugar then, maybe? Like, uh, cut the sugar The back? sugar ends up being most of the sauce. Oh. Huh. So you can't really cut too much of the sugar. So, we've got the good old five-star brandy here. Some people may be joining late. It also looks like you are drying your scallops, but do you oh. rinse yours then dry? I never, we never rinse them. You never rinse them? No. Okay. No. No. There you got it, viewers. Chelsea King. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rinse them. Get out of here. Um, we, we do typically put them in between towels like this. This is actually our napkins that we use. Nice. I was wondering where that other scallop was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can use them like right out of the bucket too. It's not a big deal. Cool. Um, so is your pan in. already hot or you? Oh, it's hot. Okay. So Can you're you starting tell? with a hot pan. Oh yeah. Pan. It's okay. hot. It's hot because otherwise these babies will stick to it. These we'll viewers are blowing my mind here. because this next question, they said, can anything be done with the feet? The feet uh, you the can scallops? put them in soup. Ooh. You can put them in soup if you want put to. Soup. The twist is of, I try to describe this in the recipe, the twist. It's so that uh, it doesn't stick automatically to the pan. Would you use nonstick? I don't know if I'd flambe in a nonstick. Okay. I'm just saying. Oh. I, I forgot mean, about the flambe would you part. Want, I wouldn't, well, on a gas stove, this will, this will burn. And it'll catch on fire uh, when, you, when you add the brandy. Whereas, uh, I mean, on this, it probably won't. And, Boy, it's making. You know, you never realize until you get out of the restaurant how much of a mess you make. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to do the last of those. I don't think. Actually, we'll take that baby out because that's yeah. That's yeah. Oil oil you. Uh, this is just olive oil. Yeah. I mean, I didn't send it to me, so it must have been. So, what are you watching for as they cook? I am right now just moving them around to make sure that they aren't sticky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, we're looking for a nice hard crust on them and you'll see them start to shrink a little bit so it looks like it's really really full right now which it is mostly but um it'll they'll start to shrink up yeah i'm like stepping back from the oil splatter because it's a little bit of oil it is splatter. yeah you never really realize i mean the big <laughs> tent, you once you're over here it just you know you don't notice um, it until you I clean can, it up the next yeah. at the end of the night you go oh wow i guess okay. i made a mess <laughs> Okay. As opposed to a nonstick? The yeah. trick to cooking in a stainless and not having it stick. So uh, it's got to be hot. It's got to be really, really hot. The oil's got to be hot. The pan's got to be hot. What happens when, when the pan is hot is that all of the tiny little um, cracks and crevices in the pan expand, so they close. So if you've got this little crack like this, 
as, as the pen Maybe expands, that hole closes. Okay. I'm be like, it's so you end up having less places for it to stick. Whereas on a cold pan, you've got all those little crevices, something kind of slides in there, and you're not going to get it out. <laughs> it's it's going to, as, it ex as the pan expands, it closes onto the piece of meat so that it's stuck then. So you want to just have it be really, really hot. I think that that's, those are a couple of things that home cooks will often, at least I'm speaking for myself, will often struggle with is the hot, ha having high enough heat and using enough fat. Yeah, I, uh, in this case, oil, right? I have my, my smoke alarm is behind a door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we close the door um, and, and we open all the windows and that's just kind of how it works. Um, otherwise, it doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. Not at home. Not at home. Because it just makes such, such a such a mess. We're right. So <laughs> we, we, there are things that we will do on the grill because of that. Yeah. Because you can get a high, high you heat. You can get a nice grill. high heat and you can just get it going real high. Let's see. I want to make sure that I'm on there all the way. We're still at high heat. Okay. Come on. Are they losing water right now? Look yep. Okay. They do. I mean, you can see they're starting to brown but they're not a crust. You know, you can see the brown on there, but that's not enough yet. You need it to be right hard. You need a nice crust on there. The first time I had scallops with my dad in Toledo, Ohio, they were they were so springy, bouncy like uh, Super Bowls, you know? No, well this will be the majority of the cooking time. Ah. This we'll right flip here. them, we'll add some butter to it, we'll baste them a little bit, and then it'll be done. It's and we'll fast. take them out and make the sauce. It's fast. So, yeah. yeah. Weeknight dinner, scallops. Yeah, exactly. And it's just a lot of, you know, making sure nothing's sticking. <laughs> that's, that's the primary thing for scallops, but we're starting to get a nice Ooh, crust yeah. on there. So pretty soon we're gonna add the butter. We'll make some space here. Chris is watching at home and they ask, how do you get that, um, <laughs> it's the, thanks Lindsay, yeah. <laughs> it's the, it's the oven. oven in the future. <laughs> um, Chris asks, how do you get that good crust without overcooking? You just start on one side, just keep going on one side until it's, until it's where you want it to be and then you're almost done. The cooking on the second side is just to kind of just barely bring it up to temperature. What mm. you're doing is you're just getting everything on this one side. The bottom of a scallop is almost never, you know, actually browned. You don't, unless it's a big scallop. I mean, sometimes there's big ones. They look like almost like hamburgers, tiny hamburgers. And those, yeah, you have to actually brown. I mean, but, on, that, on that same level, someone asked, do you worry about crowding the pan and steaming them instead of searing? It's hot enough that it's steaming, that it's not steaming it. Um, that's also why I didn't add the last of these. Okay. I'm trying to get 12 orders out, so <laughs> it ends up being a little bit more exciting. Our lucky yeah. in-person audience gets to eat the dish tonight. If you'd like <laughs> to join us, become a Cap Times member. <laughs> yeah, you get to eat plug. scallops. <laughs> yes. You added the butter on the side. Yes. Okay. And we'll just bring it down. Huh. How much butter was, was that? Did you have? Uh, that was four tablespoons, I think. Four. Yeah, because I had six. So yeah, it was four tablespoons. It's gonna be so good, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy that we're doing this tonight. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to turn around real quick and see how my potatoes are coming. Well, they're not quite boiled yet. And for anyone in the in-person audience, you guys didn't get the recipe in advance, send me a message and I'll get it to you. Yeah. So those I who register at home, they get the recipe to cook along with us while yeah. they're at home there. Hence, cooking with the cap times. Cooking you with. You the food. Cooking with. We should print them off in the future and we can give them to you when you're here. Noted. Can I get a glass from Beck, maybe? Ah! You're amazing. Thank you. Cheers. That was Cheers. very good. Cheers, everybody.
<laughs> but as you can see, they're getting they're getting a nice crust mm. on there. Mm. Flip them all oh, over. that is delicious. Sauvignon Blanc. I love it. And it's a little bit creamy too. It's not like hard acid on the back of your teeth, which I also enjoy. Okay, let's see. Get back down in there. Well, they're almost done. So at home, this is so oh boy. How am I gonna make it so they can see it? You kind of just kind of base the scallops. It looks wonderful, let yeah. me uh, assure you. On <laughs> the camera. It's here. a little if I if I was two feet taller, this would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so the butter is cooking them on uh, like cooking them, helping them cook yeah, all the way through. Almost slightly deep fried. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like it's like a pan pan off. fry? Yeah. Almost? Yeah. But yeah, that's it. Hey, Lauren. Can I get a pan to put these on? Okay. Just like a uh, okay. sheet pan? Thank you. Because I didn't think of that. Yes. No, thank you. Thank you very much, though. So, yeah, I, I stopped drinking, so. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. I don't care. Um, no, if, if it had been Sancerre, I'd have had it. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I do love Sancerre. Oh, it's so one much. of my faves. Yeah. Just pick I love that you suggested a wine. Here. That made me really happy. Oh, it's my favorite. Yeah. But yeah, we'll take yeah. these out. I bet they have some Sarah Leopold's as well. Like, I'm reasonably Thank sure. Thank you. <laughs> Leopold's is one of my happy places. Yeah? Yeah. I have not been there. Well, it's coffee and wine and books. Like, <laughs> you can't <laughs> go no, wrong. No, you really can't. I, I'm, it's like you a really physical can't. impossibility for me to, like, walk out of there without dropping a lot of money. But I... <laughs> I just, yeah. That I can see that. Arcadia and Sutton Spring Green is kind of similar, right? Again, like books, coffee, wine. Ruth okay. Ruth at home, is the heat still on high when you added the butter? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You want that stuff to, you want that stuff to melt, and that's how you're cooking the bottom half of the scallop. And I'm going to pour this actually in into that the, into um, this one bowl right here. Oh, okay. And Chef, I know you talked a little bit about the pricing of scallops earlier, but Denise is asking again, how are they typically priced? Do larger ones cost more per pound than smaller ones? Yes, they cost a lot more. Like shrimp. Shrimp yeah, are like that too, yeah. Yeah, it's the same exact idea. Uh, sh you know, shrimp, shrimp are, uh, you know, priced like prawns are really expensive, and then yes. as you go down the cocktail, shrimp are pennies each. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like langoustines or whatever. Yeah. Like a, yeah. I'm probably saying that wrong. I don't know. But so I'm going to just make all the sauce now and then we'll sear these babies off. OK. OK. So, so in the same all of the bacon in the pan in the we've same got, pan that you just used, you did not yes. wipe it out. You did dump the fat off. though. Yes, I did. We don't want the fat. And actually, all of this can probably go. Listen, now I know we don't here. have a grocery sponsor yet, but is there a place where you'd recommend to purchase scallops at? Um, well, actually, what was the place? Burke and Benham. There, yes, they, oh, yeah. that <laughs> sounded like a great idea. Yes. And then um, I did see that they have a whole bunch of scallops at uh, at Metcalf's when I was there. Yes, I looked Every at Metcalf's. Every month, people plug Metcalf's. Metcalf's, we're waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you want to be a sponsor, come on, Metcalf. We can do so much more. <laughs> But Burke and Benham on Monroe Street, too. Yes. I haven't been in there yet. Burke and Benham on Monroe Street, um, just a, a cool seafood shop. Again, like I, I keep talking to him for stories and stuff, and then I haven't been in. Um, if you are doing this at home on a gas stove, ah. add the brandy away from the flame, like, like this. Do not do it over the flame. <laughs> you can set the bottle on fire. And Whoa. That's a really bad option. You can? Yes, you can. You can do that with wine as well. I was already afraid of that. No, you can. You 100% can. I literally, like that little note of like, be careful, because it could catch fire. Chris, my wonderful editor, wrote, sweet! <laughs> it could. I mean, but if I was, I was like, doing I it over there, it would this. catch fire. I mean, like, usually what happens is I have a nice flame going for a while, and then I go do something. And then when the flame's gone, then I really have to start paying attention again. Ah! So. I mean, you could light this, like you do with beef burgundy, right? You could yes. just go. Yep. You could. Will the alcohol still burn off for the most part? Oh, or yeah. Cook off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's for sure. Is there a substitute if you don't want to use brandy in your cooking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
We had a dish for a while, a salmon dish that used a brandy mustard that we reduced oh. the brand. We took an entire bottle of brandy and reduced it down to a quarter of a cup. Wow. The main flavor note, vanilla. Huh. Okay. So I would say maybe you just add a touch of vanilla and maybe you could either use, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to stay away from alcohol, like right. an alcohol abstinence um, or a, religious, uh, a yeah. religious issue with alcohol, you could just uh, add just a touch of vanilla and water. Okay, Because yeah. what you're doing is you're making a caramel with the, with the uh, brown sugar. Right, okay. Right, so and then, still so water, water would, yeah. Yeah, so this is still at a pretty high heat. Oh, this is still at the highest Screaming heat. Screaming hot. This is the it's highest 100%. heat it will go at. <laughs> if I could yeah. make it go faster, I would, but it won't. I didn't think we could do it, but we have another scalp question. <laughs> sure, go for it. Um, can you use frozen sea scallops and achieve the same great result? Who asked that, Rob? You can that was with the, cam. You can with the, oops, wrong camera. Um, <laughs> you can use uh, frozen sea scallops in the coquille because we're going to, uh, we're going to poach those. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you won't get this right if you use a frozen scallop. It'll leach out water. And then when it, as it leaches the water out, it's just going it, to, you're just going to boil it. I mean, you saw that these leached out some water, and we're going to put this bit that it's back that they're in. losing back into yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see that, um, yeah. But they won't, it won't be quite the same texture. Got it, okay. Okay. So yeah, so we got that going. Let's That's really good to know. That's Come a good on. question. Rob. Oh yeah, the Rob. Rob right is that awesome. the best question so far? I really like that question. <laughs> All right. Because a lot of times the seafood that we're getting is frozen, right? Sure. And can I get another sheet pan? Oftentimes it's it's frozen in such a way that you're still getting pretty good quality, right? Depending on what the fish is. Yes. I was actually wondering. This is kind of a side question, but has has the fish you're able to get at Tempest been affected by the supply chain? Yes. Stuff? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so we'll we have a small menu because we can't get everything. Wow. Yeah, we used to sell. You're lovely, thank you. Um, we used to sell barramundi all the time. Uh, we mm. can't get that. We used to sell uh, it up until a, like a month ago. We weren't able to get snapper. Um, oh wow. And the sea bass that we've been getting, they're out of. The mahi all went up in price. Everything is just absurd. Wow. It's just so absurd. <laughs> so yeah, it's been hard to get a lot of things. Um, the big ones like tuna, scallops, shrimp. Sure, you can get most of that. Shrimp, I mean, still have a season. Um, the I'm gonna just what is the season for shrimp? Oh, uh, I what am is the dismayed season that I don't know that. Um, I believe it is, when, when is it hard for us to get them? I'm trying to remember now. Um, I think it's in fall okay. when, when they start coming out of season. Got it, And okay. it becomes really difficult to get a hold of, especially the big ones. Because um, we use, U, we use U15s, they aren't huge, but they're still, you know, pretty big. Yeah. Um, how do I have two? Questions are just flying in. People want this bottle of wine, I'm convinced. Awesome. Um, <laughs> let's start here. Will Tempest, Chris uh, is asking, will Tempest have lobster rolls again? <gasps> oh, those were so Not much. anytime soon. It's lobster. all right, we'll blow past it. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chris. Sorry, Chris. There's but plenty of other menu items. There I, are lots. I did love those, we though. We have, I mean, the problem is, is that lobster is incredibly expensive right now. Um, and it is, not only is it incredibly expensive, but like getting tails is not always a guarantee. Um, we use whole tails that we cook in our own court bouillon. We take them apart, we cut them up, we portion it out. We don't use the stuff that you can get in the freezer. And uh, we, use, we use the real deal and it's, expensive. We're talking, what was it last time that we paid? $35 a pound, I think, for lobster wow. tails. 
And that's what you that's are what paying. Right. We pay. And that's not what we, that's what we had, pay. Like, and, yeah. Sitting at the yeah. That's what we pay. And half of it's shelf. Wow. Which we use then to make like lobster bisque or something. Sure. But at the same time, it's not it's not cost effective. Aha. Hello sauce. How this that, like, is sauce. How long do we think that take that takes? Like to 10 minutes or yeah, so? so? Well, that's because we did a lot. Oh, yeah. Okay. We did enough to serve everybody here. Um, but the sauce, like, it, it, it's thickening. Like, it's yes. visibly thickening. Okay. You, can see, you can see that there's, you can see the pan underneath as you draw the, as you draw the, the uh, spoon through it. Mm. So speaking of the, the pan, pan, Wendy asked if you could also cook with a cast iron skillet. Ooh, good question. Good question. Wendy. I would think so, yeah, because there's not that much acid in it. There's just enough acid from from the lemon. Yeah, I was gonna say so, you squeeze lemon in there, but that's but not that much acid. There's a lot of fat in here. Not as acidic as wine. No. And as you're doing the sauce, really, I'm just gonna blow through some here. Yeah. Peggy asked, how much do you reduce the sauce? Half cup, quarter cup, more. Um, oh, good question too. Or half quarter or more half cup. I'd say it probably reduced to a quarter. This is what we're looking for wow. right there. Is that a coat the back of the spoon situation? Yeah. Okay. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for real nice. Sauce. Maybe do that again, but maybe, <laughs> maybe a smidge lower so we can see Down here? really in the camera. Yeah, let's see. Is that maybe good? Maybe once more. We gotta get that. There we go. There it is. See how That's it kind of it coats the spoon. It just kind of clings. It's almost it's almost where like I stopped making jam. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so we will plate. You did talk about season for scallops already, so we can, uh, I don't know if you want to answer it again for Tom. Tom, you know, we can read these. Yeah, why not? The season for scallops, it's, it's any time but the fall, right? Like it's, is that scallop season? Uh, is it the same as shrimp season, I guess? We talked about think, shrimp season. Oh, I think it's about, about, the, season. I think question, it's about the same, but I'm not positive, Tom. I'm sorry. Sean asked. I like to admit when I don't know things. Sean asked, did you make saffron cream scallops at the Opus in the late 90s? <laughs> Such a specific question. <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry, I did not. I didn't work there until 2002. <laughs> Sinji was gone by then, and um, I learned how to make all the good sushi things from a very wonderful Japanese lady. Um, so we poured all of the goodness oh, yeah. back into there. And One last just, question mm -hmm. to get through some of these audience questions here. Yeah. Nell asked. Go ahead. Uh, they first commented, Susan should like this question a lot. Drum roll, you ready? I think I know Nell. Do you? <laughs> is this dish gluten free? <laughs> I know Nell. <laughs> um, yes, this dish is gluten free. <laughs> Assuming, of course, your bacon is gluten free. Mm. So if you use good quality bacon that is just bacon, then you're set. So, we are in Wisconsin. There is no excuse. Not to use good quality bacon. So we added the scallops in just to heat them back up. It's not going to cook them anymore. That's so saucy. Oh yeah, look at that sauce. That's what we wanted, sauce. Yay! So you take a couple teaspoons full here. I'm going to turn that off again now that it's nice and hot. So we don't need it to be frothy. Do a couple little swirls around. A little chef touch. Like I love that. I never do that at home. <laughs> um, another little spoony spoon. Like that. And the nice thing is, is that if, you know, like, like here, if there's a whole bunch of people, you can uh, save the sauce and you can that. do it with more Beautiful scallops. Beautiful scallop right there. Look how gorgeous that is. Round of applause yeah. on the first one, I mean. All right, I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna, oh, Beck wants a photo here. Thank you. And I'm just gonna and start right down here with along you. At home, be sure to take yes. the cap times and any photos you post. Um, we'd love to share them and see the dishes you make at home. Yeah, and then we've, we've got a, a second dish tonight. This is like a bonus. It's a birthday bonus. Exactly. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> I, I love we celebrating everything, so this is just an excuse to celebrate more things. I'm like, Flag Day, yes, you know. We were we were saving some cheers until the end, but it is oh, Lindsay's right. birthday today. 
I feel like I keep mentioning it. Special. No one's not going to remember that. <laughs> That's okay. Everybody should know. I mean, why shouldn't they know? So, I, I am now prime again, so that's fun. <laughs> is, there, is there a favorite question so far before we start the second dish? I mean, the gluten-free one felt like trolling a little bit, but I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not mad at it. <laughs> oh, and I do know that now. I like the supply chain. Yeah. I want to know, so is there something that's taking the place of the things that have gotten so much more expensive? Was there a, like a... Uh, the question is about the supply chain. Yeah, like are there things taking the place of the things that are hard to get because of the supply chain? Like what's, like what's taking the place of that? We never used to sell California sea bass. Oh. Um, we started doing that this year um, because oh, we could get it. <laughs> um, there wasn't, uh, there, we used to get, you know, Australian sea bass, also known as barramundi. We used to get that all the time. People love that dish, and uh, but we haven't been able to get it. We haven't had um, those. If we can't typically get the appropriate fish, we change dishes and get something else, or we go with a smaller menu. Oh, we need these guys. And we have had them? smaller menus the whole time. Yes. Uh, yeah, I need two more. It looks like. I got them. I got them. Awesome. Thank you. Can I give this to you? Yes. And I'll take those. Can okay. I get two more? And I'll save the sauce for later for the people who are. Thank you. Thank you. All right. To our crew here. All right. Um, all right, Diane. Oh, Diane has a great question. This might be the winner. Awesome. How do you get to be part of the live audience in Kessinix? <laughs> well, let me tell you, Diane. <laughs> oh, I think that probably is the winner. <laughs> uh, Murphy can post the link again of how you can become a Cap Times member. But first and foremost, this is a perk of Cap Times members. And what it means to be a Cap Times member is you give any down. amount to support our newsroom and uh, projects like Cooking with the Cap Times. So, Lindsay uh, started this series to feature different chefs every month. And it was the pandemic and we were bored. Yes. Um, <laughs> it did, yeah, right. Yeah. And we were just like, let's do something that, like, I, I decided I was just going to, like, I feature that people that oh, I like. No? Yeah. I mean, the first that one, one was I'm at home, Lindsay's at home. Yeah. Chef yeah, yeah, yeah. of Evans of Cadre. I mean, you can watch them all of Cadre. You can watch them all on Facebook and no, captimes.com. Our to gorgeous catch up Lauren on them. was featured. Lauren. Yes. Montalbano was featured. Yes. Ooh, this is beautiful. Okay, I'm one more question. There. Denise says With the price of scallops so high, is there a complimentary seafood or fish item to use along with the scallops that may help with keeping the cost down? Ooh. You could use shrimp if you wanted to. I don't see why not. Um, I wouldn't use a fish. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say I would say a, shrimps would work fine. They're delicious too. A fine king mushroom. Ooh, Lauren, our vegan expert, says king Very nice. mushrooms would be Very great. Nice. Actually, that would be delicious in this. We I use think. actually a lot of mushrooms at Tempest to and go along with our. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big stem, like a big Yeah. Oh yeah, like a king oyster. Like a king oyster. King oyster mushroom. Yes. Nice. So we're looking like our potatoes are almost done so that we can start our cookie dish. All right, I'm gonna grab a fork. Do you have a fork? Is there a fork? Somewhere? Is it over that here? Way. Go that way. Okay. That way. that way. Now look down. <laughs> and Amazing. they're squishy. Perfect. I'm just gonna have a little bite of this scallop over here. As you should, it's your birthday. It is. Yes. <laughs> and you said I can dump that in the sink at the end? Thank you. I'm just gonna dump my potatoes. You might get a little really steam bath. Oh, I'm glad Thank you enjoyed it. Mm, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. story of my life. <laughs> mm. That's amazing. Come around. So right now we're um, gearing up to prepare the second. Yes. Yep. Now, so now we're getting ready we're for the second on one. We're on the coquille now. Oh, you said that. For Chris and Amy. And uh, so I just drained the potatoes to be able to make uh, to be able to make the Duchess potatoes. Get rid of that too. And uh, so Duchess potatoes are basically 
yummy mashed potatoes with eggs in them so that you bake them and they turn brown and pretty. Is that what the egg does? Does the egg yep. help with... The, the egg makes it brown. Huh. I didn't know that. Okay, so you have a massive colander and you're just draining out your potatoes. Yep. You're not saving any of that starchy water. Nope. Just straight down the... Straight down the straight drain. Straight down the drain. Because once again, this is another one where it's a reduction and it's just going to be pure heavy cream. Ah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Carol did ask at home, um, do I dare ask the calorie count for the scallop oh dish? Oh, Lord in heaven. <laughs> I have no idea. And we I will would, never I tell don't you, Carol. <laughs> Eat it, The enjoy. one that you're going to be more concerned about is how, much, how many calories are in this dish. We never want to know. No, we literally really don't, don't. want to know. Take a walk. You'll be fine. <laughs> Take a walk later. That is great. What is it the chocolate shop says if you want? Oh, uh, if healthy. you want healthy, eat carrots. Yes. yes. Yeah. I really like that philosophy. I completely agree with that. <laughs> you know. Have a salad. It'll balance out. Exactly. Well, that's what I like to hope happens when I eat my salad for lunch. I okay, went to well, a demo once at, with the fried chicken makers from down in Chicago. And they just said fried chicken is a sometimes food. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sometimes food. Sometimes. I eat it way more than sometimes. <laughs> oh, man. We, we tend to eat it a lot at Tempest, too, because we uh, our little pandemic pivot was Henry's not famous yet fried chicken. And um, like at the restaurant or like a virtual at the, okay At the restaurant. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> not famous yet. Not famous well, yet. Come on, let's promote this thing. All right. And, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> you clearly <laughs> love making it. Um, um, well, we did it because we did takeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when what? you do takeout, you have to have something that travels well. Sure. And in order How does to fried chicken travel well, it's fried. It travels better than scallops. <laughs> <laughs> so Molly commented and said that fried chicken was the best. So oh my gosh, okay, people well. know I've not had it. Oh, I put it over here. Oops, sorry, everybody. Um, you so had it here? You just yeah. added uh, salt and what else? I added salt and white pepper. White pepper. What's the difference between white and black pepper? Uh, white pepper doesn't show flakes. <laughs> and plus white pepper comes from white peppercorns. Um, they are, it's not going to be have the same kind of bite. It's not a true peppercorn. More delicate, yes. let's just say. Apparently, um, Julia and Jock used to fight about that all the time. Yeah. Black and white pepper, yeah. Yeah. Um, Henry's not a giant fan of white pepper, but it doesn't show up in the coquille, and Henry likes that. He wants the coquille to be white. So it's not, you don't want it to be flex. something. Yeah, you don't want flecks of black in there. Sure. So we're just s carefully mashing up the potatoes. The reason why we tend to do it in a mixer is because, well, the mixer's huge and we make a lot of these. Yes. Um, <laughs> you could also mash them with your hands, though, you right? Can. Okay. You can. You can mash them with your hands. You can use a hand mixer. You can do it however, however it becomes nice and smooth potatoes is the way to make it work at your house. But not a blender or a food processor because that will make it. That will turn it into, into concrete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so let's just do this here. I gotta say, it has never occurred to me to make mashed potatoes in my KitchenAid, uh, and I need to now. Like, this is important to me. Now. Isn't it way easier now? It so, <laughs> looks so easy. We're almost there. And I wasn't gonna bring the KitchenAid, I was just gonna be like, oh, hey, I'll just do it by hand. I was totally gonna do this by hand. That would have been stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I admit it when I make but mistakes. We just don't need I to. have no problem with that. There we go. Yeah. Ooh, okay. It's steamy. Yeah. Now, typically, I did put in the recipe. This is something that you could do ahead of time because really, I'm not totally looking forward to putting this into the piping pan, into the piping uh, bag, oh, and holding it's be it. Hot. But that's okay. I have chef's hands, and they'll survive. <laughs> do you not have? You don't have feeling. A lot of chefs. I don't, don't have, have a lot of feeling in my hands. No. Yeah. I don't. Um. I do want to see what this tastes like, though. Make sure it's going off. Did you say the chicken was on the menu still or not? Molly's asking. I'm not, I swear, chef. <laughs> <laughs> do we want it? It's a surprise. Go no, to. No, it's still okay. on the menu. Henry, Henry loves, the, loves that stupid fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um, it takes up an entire fryer, and it becomes difficult. But whatever. 
And um, as long as he buys another fryer from Kastnick sometime soon, there we go. We can Look keep at this that. fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Kessenick's making fried chicken dreams come true since 2022. I, he's, he tried to do fried chicken at the Orpheum. Yeah. And uh, we didn't have a big enough fryer for that. Uh, we had a tiny little fryer that we did all that bluegill out of. Oh, jeez. And uh, that was a pain. Let's put that in there, too. Put that in there. Let's get it. Make some space. Here. You just made Molly's husband Gary very happy <laughs> about the fried chicken. <laughs> Molly. <laughs> so I am cheating here. They didn't have a big enough star tip to put on the piping bag. So we're just going to cut the bottom off. And you can do this at home with like a Ziploc baggie. You can just take the bag, fill it with the potatoes, cut the, tip, the bottom tip off, and then boom, you have your own piping bag. But uh, here, we're just gonna cut the tip off. Typically at, at Tornado, we use a nice big star tip. It's about that big. <laughs> and it makes ridges in the potatoes, oh. yeah? So they're pretty. I almost forgot the eggs. <gasps> Nobody saw that, did they? No way. No way, you didn't see that. <laughs> but hey, the most important part. Eggs, eggs important. Yeah, because otherwise they aren't Dutch's potatoes. <laughs> I mean, they're still delicious right though, it. right? Look, I bet they're still really Exactly. Good. So we're gonna take six eggs. I need six eggs. Do you need these? We're gonna Come throw on. the yolks in there. <laughs> but hey, they're perfectly seasoned now. That's too expensive. Oh, are, the, are you doing yolks? Yep, just yolks. Oh, I feel like I should help. <laughs> if you want to, I, actually, I unfortunately did not bring another bowl to put the no, it's fine. into. Otherwise, like, I'd be happy to say, here, go ahead. There are times <laughs> when I'm standing here, I'm just like, what I'm are you doing? Like, I'm not, I'm just Why not am I not doing, doing something? It's your birthday. It's this your birthday. One day you, just don't you don't have, have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Ooh. There we go. Throw these babies in there. I did some interesting interviews today, though. It was fun. Who did you interview today? So I was talking to Matt Pace over at the Great Dane. Oh. About so I'm writing a story about what are ghost kitchens anyway? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a good idea. Ghost kitchens and virtual brands, which led me down a rabbit hole uh, to. Have you all heard of Mr. Beast? Do not Google Mr. Beast. He's awful. I don't know why <laughs> he's so popular. Who is that? He's a YouTuber with like nine million followers. Oh. And apparently he like gives money away. I don't know. He has a burger brand where like you you can like as a restaurant you can be like yeah we want to be a Mr. Beast burger provider or whatever and then huh. yeah Mr. Beast burgers. Wow. It's truly wild. But he, um, it's like a YouTube virtual brand. Chris is asking how much mixing can the potatoes stand before they get Ooh, tough? Question. Not much. Mom That's why always... we use a stand mixer and. Um, that's why I was going pretty slow, and we were talking about how you don't want to do it in a food processor. Right. So, and I'm going to stop mixing them here, and I'm going to do the rest by hand to get the eggs in. Fold it in? Yep. So that you don't end up having tough potatoes that become kind of gluey. Molly said that they used grits instead of potatoes. Ooh. They went great with the first dish. I can believe oh, it. Oh, I bet. We make uh, we make shrimp and grits at, at Tempest all the time, all, every day, and uh, I love grits. Yeah, so do I. Okay, so you can see that it's now fully incorporated in. They're just a slightly lighter color than they were before. Now we're gonna put it in the piping bag. The last time was just a fake out. Now it's cooler, too. I Slightly. Bet. Slightly. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much cooler. Cold or anything? Do, you, do you think you can? <laughs> Is it going to be too hot for you? I don't want you to do something on your birthday that's going to be too hot for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren did give me a temporary tattoo, so I'm like ready to rock. Now, wild night. Yeah, wild now. Now. It's so an many infinity tattoo that tattoos. says dream. <laughs> so 90s. <laughs> like 
Like, I just really want to take the bag of potatoes and go. Just drop that in my mouth. That looks, smells so good. Okay. Let's try one more in here. Let's see what happens. You love a good man. Is that baby over it's there? a tube. Jared. It is a tube of potato. Look at that bag. It's huge. Thank you very much I love for it. Your help. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna get this tray right here with all of our little shells. You can order these on Amazon. Yeah, we checked. Yeah, we looked around to see who sold scallop shells. Because I, before we do these recipes, I will like, go around different places and be like, okay, where can they get them? Uh, no place. No place Yum. but online. Now, when these are cold, they make pretty, pretty spirals up. They'll still be good, but it won't be as pretty this way. Aren't but, you guys glad to be Cap Times members? <laughs> Wow, they're hot still. So the ones you use at Tempest are bigger. The so one you were saying a tornado. Little, or sorry, a tornado. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, tornado are bigger. So this is just a little crowded. Yeah. Uh yeah, it is a little. Um, we use our shells at Tempest for uh, towers. Oh hey, thanks. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to have that third hand. Mm -hmm. um, we use ours for uh, towers, so we'll put, you know, scallop ceviche or something like that in these. Whereas at Tornado, they have bigger shells that they use just for the cookies. Do you think we should uh, pick our best question now? Are we nearing the end of this dish? Uh, we're about halfway through. Halfway through, okay, we'll give it a little more time. As soon mm -hmm. as I get these piped, we'll start cooking the scallops and then we'll be good on the way. Let's that guy over a little bit. I don't wanna like drape my sweater in the potatoes. <laughs> that would be like a not a good move. It's okay, you're fine. It's all good. There are things Thank that you. we do here at Cooking at the, with the Cap Times that I'm like, oh yeah, like I could, I totally, like I've made this, or I've thought about making this, or I've cooked this, whatever. Ooh, this has never edge. occurred to me in my lifetime. To make this? To, like to make this, to do anything like this, to like <laughs> make potatoes and put them in a thing and then put like, I You could do this at home in a, um, like in any kind of oven proof dish. At home I've made this in, uh, just on regular, like, I have Fiesta Ware plates at home, and those yeah. are all oven safe. So as long as your dishes are oven safe, it'll work just fine. Chris asked, um, what's the reason behind piping the potatoes? Um, because if you spoon them in, it looks really, really messy, and yeah. you can't get that nice little hole in the middle, typically. I mean, if you'd like to, you could probably try. I don't think that it's going to turn out as well. Um, if you have a tiny scoop, it might work. Um, but the primary reason is to get the nice star tip, which we don't have here, um, but that's okay. And also to be able to control the potato enough to be able to make the hole Cause this is where, where the, the scallops, scallops will land. Yeah, and the sauce is going to go in there too. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, the sauce is going to go everywhere. Oh gosh. <laughs> Um, we need a 10 minute timer. I will do a 10 minute timer, so how about that? Okay, sure. Because <laughs> that thing looks smarter than me. Okay, so we're going to start out ooh, with some wine. And it's just like a Chablis, anything that's a dry white. You don't want to bring any sweetness to this dish. So Chablis uh, is Chardonnay. Um, from a certain area of France, I think, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, this isn't from France. <laughs> it's okay. It's Chablis, Chablis is Chardonnay. So if you, if you find a Chardonnay that you like. Yeah, just yeah. use that. But also, like, this is one, you have a large 
container of it. You don't need that much, right? No. Like, okay. No, I'm gonna need more to make more. For okay, right, for right, you right. Guys. But uh, the we use bottles like that. I go and through on saute every Friday night. I go through three or four of those bottles. Wow, that is a lot. That's a lot of Chardonnay. So you're starting with the wine. Just three. is the pan hot? Yep. Four, five, six, seven. Because I want to make sure that I get at least eight, and then we'll do the rest afterwards. If cool. The, if that's all right. That's totally fine. Okay. So this way, everybody gets to eat. The smart thing that I saw you do was just like portioning out, like this is one, this is one, this is one, like portioning out. That's yeah. how we always do things. If uh, everything's already, we portion it as much as possible. And then as orders come in, you know, you get three shrimp and grits, a bucatini, another shrimp and grits, a sea bass, whatever. And I have a little pan uh, about this size that I start putting out. Okay, so I got an order of scallops. I got an order of shrimp and grits, two orders of scallops. I got another one than just portioning it out and going, now I know exactly what I need to cook. Yes, yeah, visually. And I don't have to look at the tickets and go, how many do I need? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're all there. So we've got the wine cooking. We're going to poach these in the wine. Um, the wine's going to reduce almost to nothing. Wow, OK. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, it'll be pretty close, yeah. We're not going to, we're going to cook these almost in their entirety. Okay. In the wine. Okay. Similar to like you cook them almost all, almost all the way, for for the first dish. It'll be the same thing here. Where we'll take them out, we'll put them in a pan, and then we'll just dump the juices back in at the end once the sauce is sauce. Once the sauce is sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So, let's put these over here, and we'll get rid of that. Ooh. It's like magic. <laughs> um, so we've got that going. We're going to do up a little bit of garnish for this, uh, which is going to be some chives, some chopped chives. Being here makes me want like a butcher block counter. It's pretty nice. It's really nice. The whole counter is a chopping board. I know. I know. Um, Peggy asked um, that in the recipe it says Tempest serves the scallops medium rare. Does mm -hmm. Tornado do it differently? Nope. No. Okay. Nope. You want them to be nice and tender, succulent. You don't want to really see, um, as as you cook as you cook any type of meat, you'll start to see the striations of the muscle. And for scallops, you really just barely want to see it. You hardly even want to know it's there. Um, if you don't want to have it be so invisible that they look like this, where they're where you can't see any of it, but as it um, as you cook it, you'll start to get just a little bit more bounce, just a hair more resistance. And that's about where you stop. This is a cut that I cannot do at home. Um, it's so, so tiny <laughs> that I will just be like, scissors work, and I'll just use You yeah. can use scissors, sure. But and I mean, they don't like have to be this tiny if you don't want to at home. It's just I mean, you can just make them. you can just make them like this, too. Yeah, and and that is, you know, slightly more rustic. <laughs> <laughs> slightly more rustic. That is my story. So we've got our little garnish. There. Ruth is getting personal now, but what's in the red bowl? Is are they red referring bowl? to this? that? Yeah. This is sanitizer water. <laughs> so I can wipe like my knife down. It's got a towel in there. Wipe down my knife. Wipe off my hands. Um, it's not soap, but it's a sanitizer that will. Uh, kill any bacteria, so then that way I'm not transferring, uh, I'm not cross-contaminating my items uh, from going from the raw to the not raw. It's kind of a nice trick. Yeah. You know? It's the restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> how you learn how to do stuff. Really quick on the scallops again, Peggy uh -huh. is just asking for a little clarification. Of course. With the crust and the caramelization, are they still medium rare with yep. the Tempest scallops? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Good yes. question. The first time I cooked scallops, I looked them up to see what temp they should be in the middle, and then I mm -hmm. used my little, my little thermal pop. If you have like a thermal pop or a thermal pen, um, they're great because you can temp out the middle of that. I'm sure Castnix has wonderful thermometers here that would work brilliantly, but like 
I, I need them for my life. <laughs> now I'm so doing a little good? cheat just good? to yeah. move things along. I'm starting to cook some cream in the back because it's going to take a while to go from this and that. I'm not going to see it. We I did have, um, for the sanitizer solution, I don't know if you want to share how you put it. So people are asking for like how you make that. Oh, um, you can, at home, you can just do um, like a cap full of bleach into, um, into a small bucket of water like this. And uh, you're looking for, oh, what is it? Lauren, do you remember <laughs> what the percentage uh, for um, sanitizer water for sanitizer water is? Yeah, yeah, I am. No, I, what you can do is you can come on down to Cosmic. Oh, oh yeah, you can buy Sandy. You can buy yourself Sandy tabs. You put you it can. in the bucket, it does the work for you. Yep. <laughs> Lauren isn't mic'd up, but in case you didn't hear that, this product oh, you can get, you can hold it up again if you want. This product you can get here at Cosmic. You put it in the bucket. You just does you it. You take one tab. One tablet. This is for you, Tom and Nancy. One tablet, drop one it in tablet, a bucket. bucket of hot water. It'll last for four hours. That's really nice, actually. Mm -hmm. It's quite nice. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about messing it up or not having the right solution. It's all done for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, I was thinking with if you're doing bleach, isn't that murder on your hands? Like a little bit. But I mean, it's seriously, you're not using that much. You're using like a cap full of it to so about that much water. Mm -hmm. That's probably Ooh. about, what, a quart and a half, two quarts? Um, so Corn it's really, half. it's definitely diluted. Yes. You're not using a lot of it. So yeah. I want to give praise to because Linda said Susan as usual you're awesome. Missouri mom. <laughs> what does Missouri mom mean? That is uh, my mother-in-law. <laughs> Who is it Linda? Yes. Linda. Um, really quick Bruce another running for the best question. How do you become part of the chef's show as a participant to enjoy these amazing dishes? <laughs> Well, we'll remind you once more, if you become a Cap Times member, we'll drop the link in the chat right Thank now. You so and you, Cap Times mem members get first dibs at the in-house seating, and then you can join us. So every month we invite Cap Times members to sign up for one of the in-person spots. So give mm -hmm. any amount. Do it right now. We won't judge you if you do it now. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting close. Do it for oh Lindsay. <laughs> there is a field that when you give, you can say why you're giving. So if you say Lindsay's birthday, oh Susan, cooking with the Cap Times, <laughs> all of the above. That works. <laughs> that works. No, no, no. Do it for Lindsay. It's her birthday. You're, you're testing them out. Like, okay, yep. so what, it, what are you looking for in terms of how they feel? See how they're just slightly bouncy? Boing, just boing, slightly, boing. but they definitely give, and the middle kind of stays there. Just a little bit. Reminds me of the sourdough test. Okay, so it's like a little bit of spring. Yep, just a touch. We're gonna take them out now because we can always cook them for longer. But we can't. We can't take it back after they're done. <laughs> right. Yes. It's like salt, sort of. I mean, kind of like think of it this way: they're holding their shape really well. Ah. Uh, when you pick that up, it's a totally different little gas. It it get it completely. And you gives. can you can see a little bit of striation here, as you were mm -hmm. saying just a hair of it, and that's all you want to see. You see how it holds uh, holds those little nooks and crannies on top? Mm -hmm. It's done. This is only just a few minutes, really. Yeah. It's really quick. Yep. It does not take long. That yeah. is getting close. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks. Are they done? <laughs> that was so much nicer They're than They're not actual. quite there yet. Let's give them a little longer. <laughs> Set the timer for like three more minutes, maybe? I don't know. Five? Oh. So once again, we'll let these sit while we finish sauce. And you can see that the uh, cream is starting to boil back here. And that was like the whole point was to make, foamy make this kind of move along here. Yes, we got foamy <laughs> bubbles on both. Yep. And we want to we wanna make sure that it's... That's it, a color. Yeah, I know. It's a kind of... I've never seen it do that color before. Blue. I don't... I don't know. Okay. Most food is not blue. Do we have a, do we have a spoon? Uh, yes, we do. Hang on. Because otherwise, I'm going to throw some wine in here and we'll reduce it. Am I smelling the here. wine? With the, what am I smelling? Do you think? You're smelling scallops, I think. Okay, well, Chelsea, you get it together. I only had one glass of wine. Because they're so fast and they're so no, decadent. No, it tastes like scallops and wine. That's good. <laughs> they're so fast and so decadent. For, there was a season of Top Chef where like, everybody was making scallops. Do you guys remember Top Okay. And Fabio Viviani was like, it's top chef, not top scallop, you know. And he, <laughs> and he got really Dang. mad about it. Yeah. 
I think we have something we could do in the meantime while we wait for um, the scallops to be yes. cooked. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, oh my God. We have a little surprise. Oh, oh nice. Oh. oh my God. So oh, here it is. <laughs> Happy birthday, Lindsay. Oh my God. Happy birthday. Thank you. Very I, nice. I blew so carefully, you guys. <laughs> you, you mentioned your own COVID. would have had trick candles. Oh my God. <laughs> That's you mentioned, so good, you mentioned uh, chocolate shop ice cream. That's where the cake is from. Oh my god! And Oreo is like my favorite. Okay. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, I'll be cutting this in the back. Yes. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was gonna start the happy birthday sing along, but I'm like, ah, I don't want to put them through it. I don't know. <laughs> we could have. So we're gonna start adding this is some cream to this. Looking beautiful. Everything is wonderful. This is awesome. I have more cream that's gonna go in there as well. Yeah. This is very boily. Yes. That is what we want. We Bully, do Bully have some word. breaking news because Chris just became a Cap Times member. Yay, Chris! Wonderful. We're cooking with the Cap Times. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> you might have won the bottle of wine. <laughs> you had the best question, right? <laughs> yeah, does Chris have a question? They asked then, a few already the opportunity that were really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, went, I know it. But Linda did have a question. Uh, okay. What is your favorite cooking tool? Ooh, that's a good question. I should make everybody answer that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, my favorite cooking tool. I do have a favorite spatula at home. Mm. I brought my favorite tongs from Tempest just in case I didn't like the ones here. Oh, so I was tongs. raised on SpongeBob, and when you said you had the like, did you see the episode where you get? I think it's the first episode of SpongeBob. Lame that I know that, but it's like it's an episode about him picking out his favorite spatula. I can't believe it. I can't that's believe great. it. That's great. I have I have a. Every day at work, I get to work first so that I can pick out my favorite utensils. And I, I get all of my favorite pans and everything that I need. And I go, these are my favorite tongs, my favorite knife, my favorite spoon, I got my favorite fish spatula, all of that, because I don't want to have to fight for it later. There's six other people coming in. I, I'm not, I might not get this. <laughs> so this is getting, this is hot. So we're going to add it to here because this is all going to have to be sauce. The texture of that. And then we might end up doing a uh, restaurant trick of going from one really hot pan to the other to try to get this to go down faster. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah no. Because we want so everybody to eat. We do want, yeah, we want to thank everyone for their patience at home. We know yes. that we say the event ends at 7 and it's 7.20, so if you have ooh, to drop off, ooh, it's okay. Everybody. No worries. I think everybody's hanging in because they, they love you and they love the dish. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you guys all for hanging out with us a little longer. Heads up for folks, if you, I don't know what is beeping. Um, oh, timer. Oh, for the videos, yes. So for the folks at home who may not, didn't see this, the, when you're bringing this cream to a boil, like it was constantly sort of threatening to boil over and that is 100% happened to me at my house. So just be aware like that it could boil over and you gotta watch the temp. Um, but also does the wooden spoon across the top trick work for cream or is it only for? No, it doesn't okay. work for cream. <laughs> <laughs> it works for like a pasta and potatoes and stuff. <laughs> yes, I've seen people do this. Yeah. It totally works, but apparently not for cream. Good to know. <laughs> Man, I wish I had laser vision right now. Everybody always has, like, you're standing there and you're just watching it cook, and you're like, if you had laser vision, it would go faster. <laughs> but I don't have it. That's OK. It's cooking. It's doing what it's supposed to do. This is good. We could get another pan if you wanted to. No, it's fine. Any other questions? Let's see. In-person audience, any questions from you guys? So far, nothing? I mean, I will say all my favorite tools at home have names. Oh. So I have a KitchenAid mixer and it's called the Little Red Corvette. Um, I feel so it's lame red. now. It's <laughs> red. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so lame now. <laughs> and my knife is named Hercules because he can go the distance. Aww. That's um, good. I don't, I'd have to have a lot of names for my knife. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of knives. I have. But do you I have, have a favorite a, knife, though? I have two wood-topped tool chests at home filled with cooking stuff. Oh, my gosh. And three drawers or knives. We do have some questions from the, um, oh, go ahead. Do you have one? Okay, yeah, I have one on knives. So I saw recently you're not supposed to put your knives in a knife block. Is oh. that true? 
Are you not supposed to put your knives in a knife block? I don't know. I don't know because I don't have a knife block. Um, have a knife but block I can either. see why you probably would not want to. Um, when you, if, especially if they're going in like this. Uh -huh. Yes. You've got an issue with the tip and then you've got right. an issue with the blade. Um, my knives are all in drawers, so. We recently got like the strip where you can like hang Mine are on the a magnet. Knives. Yes, yep. I'm on a ma mine are on too. a magnet, my mom's are on a magnet. Um, and is that an induction hot plate? Was that the question here? Yes, That Mark. is what this is. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you and then we have old fashioned right? gas in the back. And then one more question, when do you add the lemon juice and how do you keep the sauce from separating? Uh, the sauce will not separate because it is, uh, because it's reduced so much. Um, it will be, the heavy cream will be the primary, uh, the primary driver in it. I will be adding the lemon juice to it once it gets a little bit further down. It's going to have to get to about half, 50% uh, ha uh, reduction to be able to add the lemon juice. Ah, uh, I have, cur when I was a barista, I would occasionally curdle things. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not on purpose. Um, but because if you if put something in, like, people order, like, some kind of, what are the, not Italian ice, French ice, whatever, and. Oh, or, yeah, 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 and you add too much acid, and then the milk, milk, or the half and, and half just, curdles. And it gets, it curdles, and you cannot serve that. Since this doesn't have um, as much water in it, once you've boiled it off, it will, uh, it won't curdle. I think Lindsay asked this early on about what you cook at home, right? At the top of the video, were you asking that? I was asking what you grew up eating. Grew up with. Yes, I actually, so your husband cooks too, right? No. No, okay. Um, <laughs> so, so do you, he used to. He used to. Kind of, yes. <laughs> but Sorry, you, I just keep looking. Yeah, do you cook at sure. home or does he cook at home? I cook at home. Okay. And are there things that you've been enjoying lately? Um, last night I made a porchetta. Ooh. Um, Which is essentially what, like pork roast wrapped in bacon, it, essentially. Well, it, this one was pr primarily a pork belly just rolled up. It was uh, from Har um, Heritage. Heritage, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it was delicious. Um, we have, it, my husband works at the Willie Street Co-op. Oh. So whatever he tends to bring home, I have to figure out something to do with. Ah, it's like so. a different kind of CSA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. It could be anything. It could be absolutely anything. Um, I was telling Lauren, uh, the chef here, that if during the pandemic, uh, I would do meals for Madison Community Fridge Project. Ah. Um, and they have two refrigerators out for anybody to be able to take food who need, uh, who's uh, food insecure. Uh, there's no, you just go and you open the door. There's nobody there to judge you, nobody there to ask if you really need it or whatever. And um, so I would prepare meals based off of what he brought home. Nice, yeah. And uh, take them to the fridges and put them in there. Henry was very kind and also uh, donated items and especially takeout containers yeah. <laughs> to be able to make it work. And um, so I used to do a lot of that. We've made tangine with it. We've done all kinds of stuff. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. It all just depends on what he has. I mean, last week I made this pan. I mean, it must have been this big of a pan of peppers and Italian hot sausage and onions and mushrooms. <sighs> it was delicious. That sounds great. Yeah, and it's still cold enough to be able to eat something like that. <laughs> yes, right, and, and peppers, I think, are finally in season in the other hemisphere, and so mm -hmm. they're, they're, like, coming down in price a little bit, yep. which is nice, because they're wildly expensive other parts of the year. Um, you mentioned Henry. That's your husband? No, no, Henry Doan. He's the owner of the Tempest and the Tornado. Peggy needed that reminder, as did That's I, okay. obviously. Um, uh, he's one of my food mentors. He's a fantastic person, really kind, really uh, forthcoming with advice or helping out staff as necessary, and he, he's just a great person. And Lynette asked a question that I think both of you should answer, because they asked to describe the taste of a perfectly prepared scallop. Mm. I don't know about the taste, but the texture, the texture of a perfectly prepared scallop is what's, what's the most important. I, like the fr like buttery comes to mind, but it's yeah. not like the texture of butter. It's like.
but there's a creaminess to okay, it. Okay, I'm going to swing around fun. past you here, and I'm going to throw a little more It's in not as, like, briny as an oyster, like a raw oyster, but it still has a little bit of that, like, sea saltiness to it, which is really nice. Right next to you. Yeah. John said, don't there. forget the taters, and I forget if they're in the oven still. They're in the oven. Okay. I took a peek. They're still not brown, though. Thanks, John. They haven't browned, and I don't know why. This uh, is on, right, Lauren? <laughs> hope so. Jay Hughes asked, from where do you find your most inspiration for recipes? Lauren? <laughs> um, it depends on what I have available and what some of my friends have done, I guess, yeah. also. Um, I work with some very talented people who have a lot of really great ideas as well. Is it hot? Because it's not really browning anything. This is it's perfect. 450, it should be like, should be charred by now, you would think. Oh, it, it might not be hot. Did it turn off? I don't know. Cool. I have no idea. <laughs> Go oven. Go oven. So, yeah, this, is, boil this isn't as hot as the, uh, yeah, go the gas stove, I guess. That's all right. I think maybe for now, if it's okay for the viewers at home and for our video team, because we're really grateful to have Hinkley here, Maybe we should sign off, and then if you guys want to hang out longer and yeah. share with us, that's cool. Um, so for the viewers at home, yeah, we want to thank Lindsay and Susan <laughs> for being here. Um, Peggy said, no, don't leave. We could stay. <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about this, because we, we pay Hinkley, and we love to pay Hinkley more. But if we get more sponsors and more support from the Cap Times members, <laughs> we can have, like, three-hour cooking sessions. Oh, my Lord. Um, well, you can get a good idea as to what it should start to look like. You can see how it's starting to brown yeah. along the edges. And how it's starting to become this really nice kind of buttery color. Like it's actually deepening in color. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And um, it's getting close on that one. Do you guys want to pick a winning question or do we, I, I, I won't mean, voice and I'll let you guys choose here. I, I, like, I like the gentleman who became, or the person, I don't actually know. Yep, if Chris, I don't know either. Yeah, he, she, they. I think I know who this Chris, so I'm gonna look them up. But yes. Um, <laughs> Chris so, is, a, is, a, is a very open name. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to assume. Chris asked many great questions, and therefore, uh, they became a Cap Times member. We're pushovers here. We are. You become a Cap <laughs> Times true. member, we'll pick you. Um, so Chris, uh, they said she, her. Oh, she, her. Um, Sorry, Chris. Thank you. And Chris Hammergren, we know each other, I think, from LinkedIn. Um, we'll message you, and uh, you can, actually, we don't need to. You can pick up your bottle of wine straight from Leopold's. So stop by there. Yay. We'll let Leopold's know you're coming. Um, yeah, great reminder, Chris. This entire video will be uploaded to captimes.com and yes. Facebook and YouTube. So if anybody wants to go back and watch, um, it'll be there. Excellent. And one more plug just for uh, WisconsinOvarianCancer.org. If anybody's interested in donating, it would be very kind of you. Highly yes. appreciated to a lot of people. Give there. Okay, enough Cap Times member plugs. Give for Kelsey. <laughs> Kelsey deserves it. Um, Yes, okay, so one final thank you to our sponsors. We have our presenting sponsor, Provision Market at Pasquale's Cantina. So, we're so grateful for them. We yeah, want to thank our official close. kitchen sponsor, that's Kessenix, where we are this evening. It's and of course, we can thank yeah. our official wine pairing sponsor, which is Leopold's Books Bar Cafe. That's all. That's all she yeah. wrote. Happy all birthday right. to yeah. Lindsay. Happy birthday, Lindsay. <laughs> thank, thank you, Chef. You. Thank, thank you guys you. for tuning in at home. Yay, thank See you, you. next thank time. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah.